I'm I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I am wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and you as well. Are you out on the east on the west coast? West coast ish. I'm in uh, in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. So ish exactly <laughs> not right on the water exactly but yeah. well they have everything out there they have fake paris they have you know all types of things so hey, fake you want california fake, we've got fake italy fake yeah you name it we got it fake exactly we've exactly. got the wax museum of fake people that's right exactly i've been there i've, I've been there my my niece when she was young um and she was little at the time was, was a big basketball fan so she just loved that one with Shaq, you know, so she's up against it and she's yeah. barely up to his waist, you know? <laughs> I know, it's, and they look so realistic too. They look so, um, they look so real. I took one with Obama where he's uh -huh. like, you know, back when he was president, he's like sitting at his table with the red phone. <laughs> no, I get to sit at the table with the red phone. He was standing next to me they all <laughs> up like that. So, yeah, well, President cool. Steve G. Jones, we could do worse. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you. I, you might I be taking want, a pay cut, though. Yeah, well, there's that, yeah. <laughs> I think Trump just donates his... Yes, his he does. To, ...to whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, this guy, I don't know about this guy, but uh, I wouldn't want the job. I <laughs> yeah, it's not, uh, it's not exactly the most rewarding job at all times. One would You're going to get uh, hated by someone no matter what you do. So. Exactly. Well, thanks so much for, for, you know, doing this interview and uh, just to introduce you to the audience, obviously, Steve, G, Dr. Steve, Steve G. Jones, uh, one of certainly the most prominent hypnotists in the field, someone who's a media star, you've been on quite a lot of things, uh, an entrepreneur. Uh, I understand you were a minister at one time as well. And, uh, you know, you are a doctor of psychology as well as a hypnotist and uh, a very much an entrepreneur. And one of the things I did want to go into a little bit with you is more about uh, the mindset that, that you've adopted because uh, people who are ministers, people who are you know uh, therapists uh, often have, uh, and, and I've known a lot of uh, hypnotists as well and, and NLP, practitioners and master practitioners, uh, since I come out of that world uh, quite a bit, uh, they kind of approach things with very much a, you know, kind of a, I, I want to help people mindset. And so they end up not helping themselves. They, they end up being afraid to charge people for their services uh, or charge people very little where they have to work other jobs in order mm -hmm. to, uh, in order to uh, make ends meet. And, you know, so they view it in s somewhat like a mission. And I know you've had that because obviously you wouldn't have been a minister otherwise in order to do that. And yet you were able to change your mindset in order to, uh, you know, to create a real business. And you're certainly a pioneer in that. And so I wanted to understand the mindset you've adopted in doing this while still being able to perform the mission that uh, obviously resonates with you. Yeah, wow, what a what a great question. I think that um, that really gets into a lot of stuff about self worth and the value that you bring to the world, and you know, valuing that. I think as hypnotherapists, we tend to, you know NLP practitioners, life coaches, all of that. They they tend to maybe not do all the math in terms of the value that are going to potentially add to someone's life. Mm -hmm over time. I mean, if you change someone from not being productive to being productive, the, you know, what they will produce over their lifetime is, you know, potentially infinite. So, and the lives they will affect. So I just learned to take all of that into account. Like, what am I really providing for this person? It's not just an hour with me and them talking and me doing hypnosis. It's a life changing uh, opportunity for them that I'm, I'm facilitating. And so once I really own, owned that mindset, I was able to raise my rates because I was the same way. I was charging initially like, um, I think uh, $30 a session, then I raised it to $50 a session, then I raised it to, uh, um, what I raised it to, probably 150, then 250, then 2,500, then 25,000. So I didn't just go, you know, right to the top right away. But um, it, it was incremental for me, mm -hmm. realizing that for me, what it was, it was 
a lot of it was math for me because my time in the studio is worth far more than I, even now than I charge per hour because of how many lives I will affect with a studio recording that will go out to tens of thousands of people over my lifetime. The money that will come back to that for me is a lot more than what I charge per hour. So, you know, that kind of math helps too. When you, it just, it's all about valuing your time and the contribution that you're actually making to the person. Mm -hmm. That's great. So uh, I, can I ask you, where did that um, dialogue that you had with yourself come in? I mean, how did that develop? Because, you know, a lot of people have a lot of fear around that. And then they have this internal dialogue that, that, holds, that holds them back. And it seems like you've switched that. So, yeah, if you could uh, ex expound on that, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, sure. I, I did switch that. But for me, it was incremental. It wasn't just a night and day switch. Um, the big jump at the end to the, the bigger price was, <clears throat> at that point, it was definitely a switch. Uh, that was driven pi primarily by math, though. I, I looked at, I, I could see on paper what I was worth per hour in a recording studio, and I could see what I was charging, and I could see the difference. So at that point, I built up the online presence so much that it was obviously no longer uh, the value is no longer as low as I, as it once was for my time per hour. So, um, but getting up to that point, it was just a matter of, you know, feeling a little better about myself, feeling a little better about myself, feeling a little better about myself. And finally, wow, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing well here. I feel a lot better about myself. Mm -hmm. So if that's what it takes for people, that that's really what it took for me. Um, then I think that's completely normal. I, my only advice would be accelerate it as much as you can. Don't, don't take the scenic route like I did. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine you have programs for that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> now that I know how to do it, now that I know what I should have done and how I could have short, shortcut the whole thing, um, yes, I absolutely have programs for that. That's terrific. Now, you were kind of really one of the early pioneers in, in bringing hypnosis more into the digital age. I remember when I first started, I started, uh, you know, studying hypnosis in junior high school. Uh, you know, I have, I still have the books, Leslie M. Lacron. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what I started with. That's yeah. exactly the book I started with, little paperback book, The Complete Guide to Hypnosis. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, you know, of course, you know, that was, the early days, progressive relaxation, and you know everybody wanted a hypno disc and, and and all that type of thing, which I still love. I love that those things. Uh, at the same time, um, you, as you as a therapist, you know, as a hypnotherapist, you noticed something in the marketplace and where it was going. Kind of, how did you break out of that? As opposed to, you know, there's a lot of people who are in there who, you know, maybe were putting out cassettes and I, they used to sell them at Barnes and Nobles and stuff like that, you know, subliminal. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Know, looking at Barry Konikov used to, in the eighties, I used to buy his stuff at Book Gallery West in, in uh, Gainesville, Georgia, when I was at the University of Florida, mm -hmm. Barry Konikov, subliminal audios, even before that in high school. Yeah. Yeah. And they were on cassette. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so my, so my journey with that was, you know, I, I just evolved with the technology. We're still doing it today. I mean, I still have a developer I train with, I, I work with to make sure we're on the cutting edge because it never stops evolving. It's really annoying, actually, because there's always some new way that you have to sell things online and the old way doesn't work anymore. Right. That's really annoying. So it forces what it forces is two things. It forces the winners to, you know, keep winning by stepping up and learning the new stuff. And it also weeds out the people who aren't, they just get left behind because mm -hmm. they're no longer on the newest platform. They're no longer doing the latest thing. So, um, so the way it went for me was, uh, around the year 2000, I was in Los Angeles. I just got into Los Angeles and, um, I was selling my, my audios and um but not in mass and i ran across a couple hypnotherapists who were selling cassettes and they had a cassette producer in their home like a you know it, it would, yeah the copier yeah, the exactly old, yeah yeah so they could do like i don't know six at once and uh and they had a distributor and i thought that is so cool they can distribute those cassettes 
and they've got a distributor. I wish I could be like them. And, but at that time, cassettes were kind of fading out. They were still in. I was still giving them my clients in my Beverly Hills office. I was giving them cassettes in the year 2000 at the end of the session. So they were still a thing. But you could tell they were being replaced by CDs yeah. and as far as physical stuff goes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just skipped. I did a little bit of cassette stuff, but I, I mostly was interested in CDs. So I found a, I had a friend, a friend of mine, uh, Bjorn England, who was in the band, um, uh, quiet riot mm -hmm, sure. yeah, um, yep he uh he's hooked me up with his studio engineer and uh, a guy named doug margetts who's unfortunately no longer with us he he passed away but uh we recorded all these audios and uh rec and put them on cd and i got a bunch of them started selling them on ebay and then started selling them on my website and then um that that really took off and then I got it, then MP3s became a bigger thing. So mm -hmm. I was warned against that. Don't do MP3s because when you do that, people are going to rip them off and they're going to sell them or they're going to give them away free on these torrent sites and, you know, you're not going to make any money. And so I ignored all that and I just did them anyway. And uh, sure enough, they got ripped off and they still do. That's just the way it is. Everyone, I mean, yeah. bootlegging of audio has been around forever. And uh, that's just part of the deal. And uh, so then, yeah, so then I segued into MP3s and started selling those. And then recently, about two years ago, we phased out CDs completely. We closed down the warehouse. We didn't own the warehouse, but we contracted through a warehouse that produced them. And we said, we don't need them anymore because it, it was 10% of our market share uh, on the um, hypnosis audios for uh, about 10 years, I guess. And then right. two years ago, it dropped to almost zero. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, CDs are done, I guess. So uh, we just got rid of those. So it's a match. So the, the, the through line there, the storyline is to just stay up with the latest technology. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it, whatever it is. Right. So uh, to, the, to that point, if we can go back to the, you know, the early days when you were, you know, seeing people sell cassettes and you decided, you know, I want to do that. There's always the element of fear to that you know I, I in my experience with working with people and things like that when they're going to jump into something new and yet there is a way to take the things that you know and transfer them into new areas and kind of i was wondering what your strategy is for that what your mindset is around that because you've been very successful in being able to translate your skill sets among various things into you know into different areas like television. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, I think that uh, what I did in that particular situation was that uh, when I was putting everything onto the CDs, is I first of all figured out what clients primarily come to me for. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was, you know, the, just the usual things, weight loss, stop smoking, confidence, motivation, um, that kind of thing. So I made those audios first mm -hmm. and uh oh and also wealth manifestation of course sure. um that wasn't as big of a thing for us because i didn't have the branding from the tv shows yet at that mm -hmm. point so it wasn't as big of a deal but i did it anyway because i know everyone likes money so uh exactly. so i did one on that and uh and that worked you mm -hmm. know that they start selling on ebay and then i moved them onto my website and i got a uh, got a website and put them on there and then um what I did concerning the transferring my knowledge of the hypnotherapy sessions onto, uh, you know, now we're taking a, what's previously been done in a live session into a canned session. So then what I did was I just took the, like smoking, for example, I figured out what are the top 10 techniques that I use that if I had 10 different people come to me, I'd probably be able to help them all because I've covered all the techniques. So I put all the techniques in the audio mm -hmm. rather than, having the benefit of having the clients in front of me and figuring out what they need doing that and leaving the rest out. I just put everything in there. So that's the tech. That's what I used for my, my audios the, for motivation, for confidence, smoking, weight loss. I just put especially technical things like smoking and weight loss where there's a lot of intricate programming. So I just put everything that worked and all the good stuff, all the hits were in there. And so that's, that's what I did. And so, the two things I did again were combining the uh, the top 
things that people come to me for. And then mm -hmm. in those, in the realm of all those things, the, the ways, all of the ways that I have to get them to change. Sure. Okay. The, absolutely. So can I ask you then, when you're working with people, uh, has your, has what you do in, you know, kind of the, the digital sphere, the, the products you're putting out, has that kind of influenced the way you work with people now? Because people take in information differently yeah, because they're just exposed to different things. Uh, metaphors are slightly different. Uh, sometimes pacing is different. Nowadays, people want things right away. So ha has that kind of affected your style and how have you adapted to that if, if you've had to? Yeah, I, I don't think it really has affected it that much, except that I am aware of the fact that the primary benefit they'll get from the session is listening to the recordings of it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I'll work with them, but I always encourage them to make a recording of it so they can play that every night for 21 nights afterwards. And then as needed, every, you know, maybe three days, maybe two years from now, they, they have an issue that happens again, whatever the issue may be. So I recommend plug it in for maybe three days for a little booster shot, as I call it, and sure. go another 21 days if you really need a full fix of it. But uh, so I'm very conscious of the fact that the primary benefit they will get is not in the moment, but afterwards. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm aware of putting things in there that I feel will be more of a timeless nature for them in particular. So that's, that awareness has moved into my live sessions now. Okay, that's great. So I, I, I'm fascinated with your background. Obviously, you've, you've done a lot of things. And, you know, I looked up your, your biography on your website. And you've, why hypnotherapy as opposed, you know, you have the, the degrees in psychology. Uh, you're a minister. Why hi, hypnotherapy? I know you started that early. A lot of therapists kind of shy away from hypnotherapy as well. Yeah, well, my primary goal when I before I even started college was to be a hypnotherapist. I um I was actually doing in high school when I got that book, The Complete Guide to Hypnosis by Leslie Lacron, uh, who was a PhD psychologist for mm -hmm. those listening, and he was also very active at Stanford in the late fifties, early sixties, in developing the hypnotic suggestibility scales that we still use today. So this guy was uh, big time, but we got a little paperback book by him, and that was that's all we needed. So um, I got a little sidetracked by Leslie Lacron. What was the question again, please? Uh, yeah, kind of why hypnotherapy as opposed to the other things? Oh, the other stuff. I, yeah, I so about the degrees in them. So. <laughs> yeah, the other, the other things were all designed to aid in me being a hypnotherapist. My intention all along has been to be a hypnotherapist. Mm -hmm. uh, the only reason I studied psychology, for example, you know, University of Florida, you know, undergraduate and graduate then through Harvard was because I thought that would enhance my ability to be a better hypnotherapist. So that's, that's always been the goal. Everything has always been about that because I've always felt that's where, that's where it's at. And in the very early days, I was, um, when I was in high school, I was doing past life regressions on people mm -hmm. and, uh, I thought, you know, nobody's going to listen to any of this stuff that I'm saying about any of the any of these findings unless I have a degree, you know, so I better get a degree in psychology or just no one's going to listen to what I have to say about this stuff. So it's all that's always been the motivator. Mm -hmm. So when you were getting the degrees in, in psychology and things like that, um, I know there was a lot of pushback against hypnotherapy at the time. And uh, how did you handle that? Or did you not let them know that you were a hypnotherapist? <laughs> <laughs> By the time I was in graduate school, like working on the doctorate, I, I let them know. I said, I'm getting this degree. I'm finishing up this degree so that I can be more effective as a hypnotherapist. And I, I let them know the whole plan. I just laid it out. <laughs> and that was great because my, you know, graduate school, when you're, when you're at that point, you're working very closely with a team of advisors, academic advisors who want to see you get the best benefit you can from the degree you're pursuing mm -hmm. so actually having them on board with that helped tremendously so my you know my my master's thesis my specialist uh, uh thesis and my doctoral dissertation were all about the hypnotherapy research oh, you know? so 
yeah, so it actually it actually worked out just, you know, being up front saying, hey, this is why I'm here. This is what I want out of it. And uh, let's do what we can. Okay, that's terrific. Because you always get that person. It's like, okay, so what do you actually want to do when you grow up? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've always been the, uh, I don't know if I ever wanted to grow up or anything like that. But I've always, uh, always wanted to be a hypnotherapist if and when I do. So that's, that's always been the plan. <laughs> Can I ask you, how did you get exposed to, to hypnosis? Or it was just that, it was that book. Uh -huh. It was that, that book that we talked about, The Complete Guide to Hypnosis by Leslie LeCron. I was in military school. I was in Riverside Military Academy in Gainesville, mm -hmm. Georgia. My parents sent me there uh, because they, my, my uh, dad and my stepmom, who had just come on the scene, didn't really know what to do with me, and we weren't all getting along. So, so that everyone could have a happy, healthy life, they decided to send me away. That's, that was the easiest thing. So I was in military school for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. I didn't want to be there. I was looking for a way out, at least mentally. So they let us go to town once a week. Uh, no, twice a week. And I went to the bookstore. I'd, I'd go to the bookstore and record store. Those were the, And I'd go wander off in the woods. Those were the three things I did in town. And uh, so I was at the bookstore in the self-help section, which was that and the metaphys metaphysical sections were where I hung out and uh, found that book. Mm -hmm. Complete Guide to Hypnosis by Leslie LeCrom. Started reading it. Took it back. I bought it. Took it back. Started hypnotizing my roommates in my bunk bed. And they started lining up. They wanted to be hypnotized. The teachers heard about it and they was... They were talking about it, and one of my English teacher, I remember, found out about it, and he said, uh, I was in the third floor front side, Mooney Barracks, that's my location, and he said, what's going on? In English class, he said, what's going on third side, front floor, Mooney Barracks? I hear they're doing everything short, short of leeching up there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was me with my hypnotherapy clients. So all the, you know, everyone wanted to be hypnotized. It was the greatest thing ever. So I went from being this pretty much loner kid who was doing my own thing to, you know, okay, now it's the athletes are coming to me wanting to exercise more efficiently and the smart kids are wanting to uh, learn more efficiently. So it's the same thing now, except now the athletes are the Dodgers and the smart kids are NASA. <laughs> <laughs> and... and a lot of the problems haven't changed since. Oh yeah. We're all human. We're, no matter what we, how cool we think we are, we're all, yeah. I mean, the limbic system hasn't changed in thousands and thousands of years. We're still, yeah, exactly. It's all the same stuff and we all go through the same stuff no matter who we are. Now, can I ask you, you know, let's get a little bit, if we could on a current topic, you know, there's obviously a lot of uh, panic going on, you know, people are getting anxiety over, um, you know, the viruses and things like that. Um, do you have any advice for people about how to handle that? And, uh, you know, how do you handle things like that? I know you've got a lot of more experience. Uh, you're probably doing self hypnosis as well, since, uh, most of us do. Uh, and how, what would you recommend people do in, in this case? Well, I, I look at it very logically. Um, and you're talking specifically about the coronavirus, yeah, right. um, COVID-19, that uh, was discovered in 2019. And uh, it will probably be with us seasonally, I would imagine, from now on. But I'm not a medical doctor. I want to point that out. So here's my view of it. Um, coronaviruses are nothing new. I mean, mm -hmm. when you get the flu, that's coronavirus. That's right. They've been around for a long time, and there are a bunch of them. And people die from them every year. Thousands of people die from coronaviruses every year. A lot more people have died probably in the last little time period from other coronaviruses than from the current one, I would imagine, because the current one isn't uh, that widespread yet. So I just look at it as just one more thing we as humans have to deal with. It's just, it's not... Uh, unless your your immune system is compromised or you're elderly or in some other risk group, I, I really don't see any reason to do too much differently. I myself take precautions anyway. I always wash my hands after I've gone out somewhere. I don't touch my face until I've done that. You know, I don't touch things I don't need to touch. I take regular precautions, but um, I know this thing's a big deal right now, but I think in the future it'll just be one more thing that happens during flu season I would imagine and I would encourage people not to get overly concerned but if you're in a risk group definitely be careful if you feel you have it 
call your doctor mm -hmm. and uh, take the regular precautions, wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water after you return from touching things and avoid touching your face. And I, I think you'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. And how, how about helping with the anxiety around it or, you know, kind if, of around yeah. it with hypnosis? It's, Right. If despite everything I said, you still feel anxious, which I get it, we're all human. Like we talked about a moment ago, the limbic system hasn't changed in thousands of years, so we're still wired for extreme danger. I get it. I'm the same way. And uh, the best way, luckily, hypnosis is a wonderful way to uh, control anxiety. So um, I, I feel that uh, self-hypnosis would be great. Uh, to do if you if you know how to do self hypnosis, do that. Um, if you don't, then learning it could be good. I could do a little mini class here on self hypnosis if you'd like. Um, it, it, it's up to you if you'd like to do that. I mean, okay. You know, yeah, I'll give like the quick. Um, I, I teach a hypnosis certification class too, so I'll give the uh, the three to five minute condensed version of an entire class, uh, just so you can hypnotize yourself. But all you do is sit or lie down in a safe, comfortable place where no one's going to disturb you, and then just imagine yourself in a peaceful place wherever wherever that is for you. The beach. Uh, for some people, it's walking in the city. For some people, it's a desert island where they're all alone. Whatever it is, just imagine you're you're there, and then. Imagine the sunset, sun setting, and you count down from 10 to 1 as the sun sets. And then after that, just put positive suggestions in your mind, mm -hmm. the positive suggestions that you want to have there. I am calm. I am relaxed. Everything is okay. I am a, a wonderful, strong, resilient person with a very powerful immune system. I take proper precautions. I am healthy. I am relaxed at all times. Everything that's going on now is normal. It's happened many times, you know, things like that. You want to put right. positive suggestions in your mind. And then at the end, you just bring yourself up. You say at the count of three, I'll be back up and ready for the rest of my day. One, coming up to feeling very good, full of energy. And at the final number, I'll be wide awake. And three, eyes open, wide awake. Simple as that. So mm -hmm. whenever you feel anxious, just, uh, just do that. But uh, I'd say once a day during this time would be good but for some people they do that one time and then they've just got it they're just right. broken for for a relief of anxiety right terrific well thank you i'm sure the audience is going to is going to appreciate that let me ask you this you you had mentioned about keeping up with new technology are you exploring things like virtual reality and augmented reality and those types of things and in, in how your programs will be uh, will be delivered we are. We are. We have. Uh, we've developed uh, virtual reality programs for my uh, top five hypnosis audios. The ones, the top five we were talking about earlier: uh, weight loss, stop smoking, manifest wealth, uh, creativity, and the bun and um, uh, motivation. And so we have those available. We've actually, we actually did that a couple years ago because mm -hmm. we saw the virtual reality wave coming. Um, unfortunately, the wave didn't come in as, as much as we thought it would be. It looked like it was going to be a tsunami, but it wasn't. It was more of a, uh, maybe a 10 foot wave, but right. um, it, it uh, hasn't um, taken as well as we thought it would in our market research, but we, we did prepare for it a couple years ago. We, and we do have, if you look up, you know, virtual reality, Steve G Jones, you'll find what we have there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a virtual reality experience and it works with all the modern technology because we designed it to, even though we designed it before the Oculus quest, it still works with the Oculus quest. Mm -hmm. So um, I, you know, and that again goes with uh, keeping up with technology, as you said, and the reason you want to keep up with technology is because you want to meet the people where they are. Right. You know, where, where did they go? Well, they're not on MySpace anymore. Where did they go? Oh, they went to Facebook. And if, they, if they're not there anymore, well, where are they? Well, some of the younger ones aren't on Facebook anymore. They went to Instagram. Right. And they went to, I don't even remember what it's called because I still have to look up this one. Here's an example <laughs> of me, me being on the cutting edge, but I haven't looked up this one. Is TikTok or something yeah, like that? TikTok is a, is a new one. Uh, yes. It's very millennial. Okay. Yeah. See, and that's, <laughs> and that's what you want. You want yeah. something that's the younger generation. You want something that, you know, where, where are they going? Where are their eyes looking? Because you want to hopefully raise them with you. 
you want to be right. in their perception as they're becoming adults and entering the you know the pool of consumers the pool of people looking for help and you want to be in that conversation mm -hmm. Let me ask you this then, as you look forward to new things, uh, not just from the technology standpoint, but maybe also from, you know, how you're going to do hypnosis and uh, the types of, you know, programs you put out and, you know, how has how's your style evolved and uh, where do you think you're taking it? Well, let's see, how has it evolved? We're much more efficient now. Um, we used to be, well, when I first started, it was just me running everything. I was the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. I was doing it all. But now we have departments for everything. We have people in different parts of the world who handle stuff. So we have people who are a lot smarter than me doing things. So that makes it a lot easier. But um, the, the big change for us has been just that, that division of labor. Uh, for example, I work in production, and I don't work in marketing as much. We have a marketing team right. that, that makes marketing decisions. And the reason they did that is because really I kept getting in there and telling them what to do without really knowing what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And they realized, hey, you're the hypnotherapist. Why don't you just go back to hypnotherapy land and let us do the marketing? And I said, fine, as long as you don't tell me how to do the hypnotherapy part. And they said, fine. So we did that about 10 years ago and life's been much better since. Um, so that's been a big evolutionary thing for us. Just constantly figuring out how to do what we do better in terms of production. And so since I'm in charge of the production now, but I have a good team that works with me, but I'm in charge of how it gets done. So I constantly have to look into like, um, you know, what's the latest thing in iMovie because we use that for a lot of the sure. videos that we produce. How, what's the latest thing in that? Um, what's the, also in the website. I mean, I, I spent three years learning um, programming because I, that I, I get a little overboard with some things, I guess, but I don't recommend this move necessarily. But right. you know, I started with HTML and CSS, then I learned, yeah. then I moved into uh, PHP and JavaScript, and uh, and I learned all that so that I know what's going on, how much something should cost, how long it should take to do, mm -hmm. and so I won't get these crazy bills anymore. Uh, and then for something that's very simple, and so yeah, that's how. I hope that answers what you're asking in a number of fronts. Yeah, it, it does. It does. And what advice would you have for someone who wants to make a move away from, you know, that traditional mindset? It could be in any, jo in any job, um, you know, to becoming more entrepreneurial or to become, you know, <laughs> that jump into something else. Yeah, I've seen that one too. I've always been entrepreneurial, luckily, because like, you know, when I was a preacher, the reason I became a preacher is I didn't want to be the guy sitting there. I wanted to be the guy talking. Mm -hmm. So just seeing more, you know, if I'm going to be here, why don't I be all the way here? You know, just be the, do as much as I possibly can. So I've always had that, that uh, mindset, but I do have a business partner who hasn't always had that mindset. I've seen his evolution, so I can I can share some things from from his growth. Uh, because when he first became my business partner, this was about uh, 17 years ago, actually. I have two business partners. He's one of them. He had a job at uh, I think it was Merrill Lynch. He was making like a hundred and. 50,000 a year and he didn't want to give it up and if he did his wife was going to get mad at him and he had two kids and so he had a lot of pressure you know keep your real job the one that pays you a real paycheck and this internet stuff you know that's okay if you want to do that in your spare time but uh you know it's not going to amount to anything and it's not stable like your real job and so that's you know that's the world he lived in mm -hmm. And uh, he's, uh, I go by Zodiac signs a lot. He's a Virgo, so I, I'd call him <laughs> corporate Virgo. And I, call him, I call him free Virgo because <laughs> he, <laughs> he freed his mind. But here's what it took. Um, and I, I think there might be some a takeaway in this for the listeners, which is um, he got laid off really? from his stable job with mm -hmm. his good paycheck. Yeah, and so 150,000 a year gone. Now is 
wife, you know, you can imagine the conversations in the family now. Um, so he was, it's kind of like he was in the boat and we're saying, hey, swim to the island. He's like, no, no, I don't want to swim to the island. Then the boat's gone. Well, I guess you better swim to the island now. So he started swimming like an Olympic swimmer. He was suddenly in it to win it. Before we couldn't reach him except on weekends. If he'd go out of town, he was gone. He didn't bring his laptop or phone. He didn't want to hear about this internet stuff. He was on vacation from his real job and didn't want to be bothered. Oh my God, he changed completely. He is always available and wondering what else can be done. Uh -huh. And so if you can put yourself in that mindset, that's the trick. That's the entrepreneurial spirit. You have to look at it like it's sink or swim. You can't look at it like, oh, I've got this going on or I've got that going on. You have to think about it, even if it's not real. This is where I said that it could be the takeaway for the listeners. Sure. Just make it real in your mind. Mm -hmm. Just say, what if I didn't have this? Whatever it is, whatever they're surviving on, what if it went away? How would I act? And then act that way. That's, that's what does it because there's always a way to get it done. There's always a way to start a very successful business if you're determined enough and if you work long and hard enough. So we worked for, I mean, we worked around the clock for years. All of us did. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what it took. And, but it was fun. And for him, it was necessary. It was sink or swim for him. But I, I just love it. My other business partner, Frank, he loves it too. He's entrepreneurial like I am. So we just really love it. We didn't have to trick ourselves like that. But if you don't have that mindset, then find a way to put yourself in that mindset. Right. That's terrific. Now, we met at uh, a recent uh, hypnosis conference over in, uh, yeah. in a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Um, and I was... I was very impressed with your presentation and um, you know, because you had a lot of success. Um, I, how do you stay humble? Because I was very impressed with that particularly about you. Well, thank you for saying that. First of all, um, secondly, it's just, we're all human. I mean, I, I used to think when I was younger that uh, I don't consider myself a celebrity, but I used to think that celebrities were, different than regular humans somehow. I don't know, but they were special. They were God's chosen children or something until I met a few and realized, no, they're just like us. They're just humans. And then I started realizing, you know, we're all human. Mm -hmm. And so um, it just, it, I've always been very aware and that, and that made it even more clear just meeting people who I previously thought were gods and realizing they're humans. It just made it very clear to me that we're all just, you know, flesh and, blood and bones and molecules and stuff and you know there some people are doing this some people are doing that some people are more well known or less well known does it matter are we all gonna die yeah are we are we all prone to coronavirus <laughs> yes i mean you know we're just we're just humans there's nothing exciting going on really with any of us none of us are special we're just we're all equal that's, that's true about that's how I stay humble. Yeah. And that's how I look at other people too. Now I don't really bow down to anyone either. So it works both ways. Right. That, I agree with you. That's, that's terrific. You know, let me ask you this then, what areas uh, are you studying now in order to further your understanding and your, your skills in, in the hypnosis world? I am fascinated with the research being done about epigenetics uh -huh. and I am really interested to see where that goes. Epigenetics for the listeners is like when I, when I took biology 101 in college, they told us that when you're born, you know, your genes are the way they are and they can't change. Right. I, I remember specifically the teacher telling me that in class. I, I for some reason that just, him saying that just stuck in my brain. And then when I heard about the epigenetics research, I guess maybe that's when that memory came back. So I remember him saying that, but that's not true. Apparently. That is you, correct. Yeah. And so that's fascinating. And so for me, that ties in strongly with hypnosis. I mean, if we can change our genes, then, well, how does that happen? And how can hypnosis facilitate that more efficiently? So those, those types of things I'm, I'm really fascinated by, and I'm, I'm just looking up all the, all the research I can find on that kind of stuff. Now, that's really interesting because I used to work in biotech, 
And okay, wow. yeah, and we were doing genomic sequencing. That's that was when it was first starting. Oh, okay. um, you know, nice. so at the race to the thousand dollar sequence and all that type of thing. Uh, wow. Very big field, and it, it is fascinating and how it does interact with uh, with hypnosis because obviously the mind body connection it goes very very deep. And so the question is, um, you know, maybe there's a lot of levers that can be switched. Mm -hmm. hypnosis in that case exactly exactly finding out where all the where, where all those levers are and uh we're one step closer now so and i think that we are going to find that uh just the thoughts that we have are really what's driving that ultimately because our thoughts drive our behaviors mm -hmm. and our beliefs and the way we feel in our body and the messages that resonate through it so that has an actual measurable effect. And I think that's what they're picking up in epigenetics. And so, yeah, I'm just honored that I can be a part of all that, or at least it looks like there's a big place for hypnosis in it. No, that's terrific. Can I ask you, are there things that um, maybe people have uh, fallacies about that you've always had to, uh, you had to dispel about hypnosis? And, you know, oh, yeah. Con tons of people. Oh yeah, constantly. There's always that because there's the um, the idea that you can go into a coma, of course, uh, that you'll never come out of it, that kind of thing. Like you might get hypnotized and go into a coma and not come out. So I, I have ways of dealing with that depending on the client in a one-on-one -on -one situation. If they say something like that, uh, you know, if I feel that they have a good sense of humor, I might say, well, if that happens, I'll just put your body in the back room with the rest of them. Mm -hmm. That gets them laughing. That, and that kind of breaks the hypnosis that they're in, thinking right. that, oh my God, I might go into a coma. This actually could happen. You know, now, now it's a joke, and we both laughed about it. So it takes that charge away. So that's a, a way that I get rid of that one in the, in the office. Another one is that um, they can be made to do anything against their will. Sure. You know, they can be made to do things. There's a movie, and I tell them about the movie, The Curse of the Jade Scorpion by Woody Allen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, who, you've seen the movie? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. So, you know, it's something like he calls him up and says Madagascar or something. He has to go rob a bank or rob his neighbor or some, something like that. Some post-hypnotic suggestion. Uh, is that your recollection of it? It, it is. It is. And it, it's funny because, um, well, maybe that person always wanted to rob a bank. <laughs> that, that could very well be. That could be. I think um, but, be careful when we talk to people. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I, I tell them that, um, you know, that's just the movies, you know, mm -hmm. you don't, uh, you don't get that kind of response with that. Um, I'm sure that certain government agencies wish it was that easy that they could just, you know, have their operatives triggered like that. But, you know, really when it, when you do have some kind of operative or something like that, they've been much more thoroughly programmed than just, Hey, when you hear this word, you'll go do all these intricate things. Uh, so I dispel that myth. Uh, what other kind of myths are there? I, uh, those are the main ones. Do you know of any others that you'd like me to address? No, I, I think I think those are the main ones. Particularly, you know, will you make me do something that I don't want to do? Will you look like a chicken? Yeah, be embarrassed. Yeah. Essentially, I always I always say I charge extra for that. <laughs> so, well, and you know again, people who do that? <laughs> I know people. I do know people do that. Yeah, yeah I, I have friends who do that for a living in Las Vegas. They. Uh, They'll be more than happy to make you do that. Exactly. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> now, can I ask you, who, who are your influences? Obviously, Leslie LeCron got you into it, just like, like I did me. Uh, but who are your influences in, you know, in learning these things? Well, Richard Bandler was a big one in NLP, of course, um, being the guy who, one of the two guys, him and, and Grinder started it. Right. So Richard Bandler and John Grinder started NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. So for me, Richard Bandler was a big influence in, in the NLP world. Um, Richard, well, I was just in Orlando with him. and uh, It's so cool that he's, yeah, he had a stroke and he's back and he's rocking and rolling. And he's, I mean, what a gift he is to the world. I mean, he's, uh, I mean, thanks to him, we have Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. you know, who's, who's also a gift. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm very thankful for the work that he's been able to continue doing all these years. He's a real trooper. And uh, so, and in hypnosis, 
uh, Ericsson, mm -hmm. because more so, I don't use a lot of Ericksonian techniques. And, and Erickson, uh, Milton Erickson was a medical doctor who was also, I'm just saying this for the listeners, yes. was a medical doctor who was also a hypnotherapist. And he brought a lot of credibility to the hypnosis world by being a medical doctor. And one of the things he liked to do was to use metaphors. So he would talk to you and it would seem like a normal conversation, but he would, he would be using metaphors to help you see your life in a representational way where he's talking about other characters and other things. It's called isomorphism where you iso mean equal morphism, meaning form, meaning he right. could be talking about a, a dog walking through a park, but that actually represents you walking through your life. So for example, so uh, he would use a lot of that. Uh, for me, I go to metaphors as a backup because uh, in hypnosis, I prefer just straight suggestion, just program them. But I'll, I'll use metaphor as a backup if I think someone's resistant. But so he was a big influence in um, just uh, just his cleverness, just his uh, his ingenuity, his um, improvisation. Because a lot of that was just he was imp improvising. Mm -hmm. He wasn't reading the Milton Erickson script. He was writing it as he spoke. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's like it was just coming right from his brain. So um, that's, that's huge because I still don't do that. I still, I still use scripts uh, mm -hmm. when I talk. I still don't do that. But he was, he's an inspiration as someone who can do that. You know, he has a skill that I don't have. And so I, I look up to him and I, uh, I still prefer to prepare ahead of time. So I say exactly what I want to say. But uh, yeah, so, Eric, so Bandler, Erickson, um who else in hypnosis and hypnosis if you name someone i can tell you how, how if or how they influence me but those are the, the two big ones right well that's those that's terrific um would you like to say something about some of the new things you've got coming out you know since we're since we're on this and people are going to be interested okay sure let me think what's on tap now um what have we got Brewing next. We have a lot of things. Well, outside of the realm of hypnosis, we have, I stepped into life coaching mm -hmm. um, a few years back also. So I consider myself a clinical hypnotherapist, but under that I do life coaching, NLP, and uh, other things, Ericksonian hypnosis is mm -hmm. in there too. Um, so we're, we're just now uh, creating our life coach certification program where previously we've certified life coaches at the beginner and advanced level. Now we're certifying trainers globally. Mm -hmm. So I've just completed, uh, completed that. I completed that project uh, about a month ago. And so marketing has to catch up with that now and get all that out there. Um, likewise, in the world of hypnosis, this is more relevant, actually, if I thought of this first, um, we've created our hypnosis trainer program, which for some reason we never had. I don't know why. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? We've never had a life, a, a train the trainer program. Okay. We've had the basic and the advanced and then there are two people in the world who I've certified as trainers, but they're personal friends of mine who I've known for a long time. Mm -hmm. One of them, uh, his name's Anil. I've known him for over 20 years. So he's one of the two who's certified uh, globally. But for some reason, it just dawned on me, hey, why don't we just open this up to other people who are also certified? So our standards are pretty high for that one because I want to make sure that you know our trainers who are representing me doing the training in the world are are as good as we can get. So yeah, that's just open. So the Steve G. Jones uh, Train the Trainer program, and that's under the American Alliance of Hypnotists. Uh -huh. so that's my organization that will be offering uh, actually both of those certifications. Terrific. That, that's great. It's, yeah, it, it, it is odd that you, uh, you, you haven't done that before. It's, I guess it's just on the list, but never made it to the top. Yeah, exactly. Well, I always considered myself like I'm the trainer. I'm the guy who will train them. I don't need to train other trainers because I'm the yeah. trainer. Then I, then I started thinking, well, what about if I'm not here anymore? <laughs> or what about, you know, I, I can have other people who do it. So I, I've always been very cautious with it because I wanted it done right. That's why I only, you know, a friend I've known for 20 years and somebody sure. else who's very astute. Um, but now I realize with, with the proper 
vetting, we can, we can allow others in. So yeah, it is unusual, but uh, I finally got there. Well, that's terrific. And, and uh, where do you plan on having your trainings then? Uh, we will have, we will offer all of that online. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So if you Google the American Alliance of Hypnotists, you'll, you'll find the uh, website and you can go there and check it out. Um, or you can just go to stevegjones.com for all of that. Actually, we've got the links there. That makes it easier. Right. Exactly. Stevegjones.com will give you access to the hypnosis part and click on that. And you'll see the trainer thing. That's terrific. Well, um, I think uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're busy. I, I do want to thank you and make sure that it's okay to use this and put it out there for people. Absolutely. You have my permission to put it out there for people and hopefully they will gain tremendous benefit from it. And uh, I appreciate you making this possible. This is, this is really uh, good stuff you're doing here because you're getting the word out there about the possibilities that people have and how they can improve their lives and get better. So James, thank you so much for what you do. Well, thank you. And thanks for all that you do as well. And for the people you've, you've helped and the people you will be helping through this. And again, for, for me, it's about how people can transfer their skill sets into new things. Uh, there's a lot of people who just feel stuck, you know, in what they're doing and they keep saying, well, I want to do something else. And to take that desire, and be able to leverage what they already know into something else like you did. And then you only have to figure out the things that you don't know as opposed to relearning. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's absolutely true. That is, that is so perfect. Oh, along those lines, by the way, I have something that, that will probably help in this that I, uh, a free gift that I can give away if you'd like. Yeah, your, of course. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Uh, that's a, the same action, same website we were talking about earlier, stevegjones.com. Just go there and you'll, that's, you'll see that. It's an unlimited wealth audio. Yeah. And that took me uh, a lot of money and a lot of time to develop that, but it's, it's for your listeners free. It's a one hour hypnosis session. Just listen to that as you go to bed at night, each night for 21 nights. If you miss a few nights, that's fine. And it allows you to tap into what we're talking about, which is your monetizable potential mm -hmm. that you can unleash and, you know, that can be your, your thing, your contribution to the world. So, again, that's at stevegjones.com. Terrific. Well, I appreciate that. I will publicize that out. It's going to help a lot of people. And, um, you know, certainly, again, that goes to the humbleness thing. And, and I do appreciate that about you especially. My pleasure. Glad to help. Thanks. And if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. You've, you've got my number as well. And, uh, you know, so All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, James. Appreciate that. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.